Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn with Blue Sky Bio, and in this video, I'm going to be showing a digital method to be able to reinforce uh, 3D printed or even milled um, restorations with trilor arch bar material. Now, trilor arch bar material is a really, really strong fiberglass reinforced composite, which is already pre shaped into a, an arch form shape. So this is how the material comes. It comes three to a box. It comes in multiple thicknesses, three and a half, five and a half, or seven and a half millimeters. I pretty much only use the three and a half millimeter material. And when you look at it inside, this is what the material looks like. You can see again that that uh, fiberglass is going multiple different directions here. And then the whitish material, that is all the composite resin. Um, and this is traditionally used in more of an analog approach. You know, it allows you to, if you've done an all on X procedure, you've put on your temporary cylinders and you wanted to reinforce your temporary, you could just press this piece of wax down onto the cylinders, mark your cylinder locations, transfer that over like a template, and then grind out the holes so that you can uh, mill this chair side. The material is thin enough that you'll be able to grind on this chair side while still maintaining a ton of strength. It's really strong. So you could mill out a little chair side bar uh, with just normal instrumentation without having an actual mill and then incorporate that into a denture. Um, just buzzing through, this would be the denture if you did this all the analog way and then pick it up and now you can end up with this reinforced temporary. Now that's all fine and good, but many times we want to avoid doing it an analog approach. And so this, again, is going to show you how you can do this all ahead of time digitally. If you are looking for this material on the Blue Sky Bio website, if you just simply come up to the shop online and then go to preformed arch bars, you'll see that the material is listed right here in multiple sizes, a couple of tutorial videos, and then we'll have this video also as a resource. So let's go back to our models now. And I'm going to make the assumption that you already know how to get to this point. You already know how to design a uh, temporary restoration using the denture module or ExoCAD or 3Shape or whatever you prefer. In this case, this is one indexed off of the bone to put it in the right position. But I'm going to just start with the assumption that you know how to do this. Okay. So the first step that I'm going to do, I'm going to hide that mandible. And what I always want to do first is go ahead and duplicate this object, okay? Um, you want to have a unchanged one that you can fall back on should you need to. And with that done, now I'm going to hollow this. So go to edit and hollow. Now the hollowing function allows you to control the wall thickness of the object that you're hollowing. So it defaults to two. I'm going to change that to 0.5. And that 0.5, I'm, I'm using that number because that's the minimum thickness that I want all the way around my trilore. I don't want it uh, protruding through anywhere. So now you can see that we have this object hollowed with at least a half millimeter of thickness all around. And before I click to the next window, what I want you to visualize is that this object uh, really consists of two shells. You've got the outer shell, the more transparent one that you see right here. That would be the external surface of this model. And then you've got an internal surface. If you were to cut this into a cross section, it would be what's composing the inner wall with the material in between the inner and outer wall being your solid and the rest of it being air. Okay, so remember that. We're going to exploit that in just a moment. I'll accept this. So now we have this object. And what I want to do is I want to delete all of the outer shell. Okay, so. I've double clicked on that. It theoretically should not be touching the internal surface and I'm going to push delete. And as you see, that leaves me this object. Now the rest of this material, um, I can pretty much not worry about right now. In fact, I'm going to separate that off. So if I come in here and double click all of these face groups, basically everything other than the hybrid, I can separate that off so that we can worry about that later. Okay, and right there. And once they're all selected, I will push Edit, Separate. And once again, I'm going to hide that. Okay, now with that step done, what I wanna do is now flip this inside out. Because remember, again, this is the inner shell, and so its actual surface is facing inward. I wanna flip that right side out. So select 
a little piece of it and then you can go to modify select all and what I would like to do is edit and flip normals that will turn this model back right side out and I don't really need this lower structure of this anymore and so I'm going to just delete that for the moment looks like it's gonna be difficult and I'm gonna to have to do this manually Okay, so now I've uh, overcome that little thing that was a, an annoying little aside that we had to do, but that's fine. So this is that internal. Imagine that this surface is basically your hybrid just shrunken in every direction by half a millimeter. Okay, with that done, what I would like to do is I would like to create a slot through the back side of this restoration uh, that's ever so slightly wider and uh, give it more space than what the thickness of the trilore is. And so since the trilor I'm gonna use is three and a half millimeters in thickness, I wanna create a slot that's about 3.7 millimeters in thickness. So go to Mesh Mix, grab a cube. These are just the primitive shapes available to you in Mesh Mixer. And we can pull that over into the center of the screen, get it over in the vicinity of our hybrid. And what I would like to do is make this where it's skinnier and we can just change this number right here manually to 3.7 again that's 0.2 larger than the three and a half millimeter thickness of the actual trilore material okay and with that done what i'd like to do now is go ahead and position this material or this uh, shape right within the biggest bulk of the material in this restoration okay preferably down below the level of the teeth. You don't want it to get up in the teeth. Those need to be left monolithic, if at all possible, for greatest strength. And so for the most part, we've accomplished that here. I'm not terribly worried about that. Um, so you can see this is in the greatest bulk of material right here. And I'm going to accept that now. And here's what we need to do is that we need to now um, do what's called a Boolean intersection. Now, all of the Boolean functions um, work much, much better if you do them with a solid shape. Okay, so technically this is a solid shape, but do you see how primitive the mesh is? It's not really a great mesh. One of the ways that we can improve that is we can, with this shape, go ahead and say edit, make solid. Now you see it degrades the edges of that mesh a little bit, but that's okay because now this is a mesh more along the lines of what we're wanting. It's a little finer. And so that's going to work great. All right. With that done now, I'm going to come up here and I want to select the uh, shrunken hybrid right here first. So I select it and then control and select the shape here. And what we want to do now is a Boolean intersection. When you do a Boolean intersection, basically it just takes the uh, area in which those two objects are colliding and it preserves those and gets rid of the rest of them. Okay, so let's uh, turn off auto reduce result and preserve group borders. And that leaves us with this shape. All right, once again, if we were to turn this back on, you can see that it entirely encases this object which we've got in there um, remember it's been shrunken in by half a millimeter in thickness if you see right here okay so that's all great we can turn that back off and now what we can do is go ahead and um, cut away this area so it, you can imagine right now you've got pickup holes here if you tried to take that wedge of trilore and slide it in from the back you're either going to completely obstruct your uh, pickup holes, which we don't want to do, um, or you're going to have to trim away on this object the areas out here beyond the holes. So maybe from about halfway to the pickup hole and back. So we're going to trim that back. And I can do that very simply by going to Edit, Plane Cut, and we can trim maybe right there. We'll scoot that up just slightly. Okay, let's do that. That preserves the shape of everything. Let's do it again.
And again. And as you see, I'm just repeating this process and get, getting rid of this area that would not be able to pass through the, um, the uh, pickup holes. Okay. Now we've got that done. Uh, this is the overall shape now to this material. And if you have an area where your mesh cut fails like that, uh, simply fix that real quick. Inspector, auto repair all, and that will fill that in flat. All right, so with this done, now we could go ahead and try to visualize any other problems with Path of Draw. So let's look right here. This is how we're looking. Um, so I'm, I'm just visualizing in my mind's eye, sliding this thing straight in from the back. That is gonna be a problem right there. Uh, this is cer certainly going to be a problem, possibly that, and so I need to trim those areas back as well. Now you could just as easily do this with your select tool, and so since I've got a lot of thickness here, I'm just going to trim this thing way back. So I've just deleted it. We'll, we'll fill that in here in just a moment. All right. And now fill those in, inspector. We want to do a flat fill and auto repair all of them. So now we have this shape, okay? And this, again, if you were to look back at your original hybrid, I'm going to put a transparent shade on this. You can see how this fits within there. And to me, that's going to have a much better path of draw. Now remember, this is not um, you know, rocket science. If you try it in and there's a problem with path of draw, like right there, just grind it off. It's not that big of a deal. Okay? so. With that done, and I can tell that is going to be a problem right there, so I will just plain cut that one more time right across here and accept that. So we've got this shape now, and this is going to basically serve as our Trilor template. This is the shape that we want to be able to lay onto our Trilor bar and trim our Trilor bar to this exact shape and then that will fit precisely into a slot that we're going to create in this. So before I go any further, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and export this. We'll call this Trilor Template. And we'll print this at the same time as we do the actual hybrid. All right, so with that done, now you can again see how this fits within the, um, the printed hybrid. And what I now need to do, though, is I, I don't have an access to slide this thing in from. So I need to create a little bit of, a, uh, of an access channel to be able to slide that in. And the way that I'm going to do that is by going ahead and selecting this entire back edge. So you can see it's all highlighted green because of the functions I've done so far. I'm going to double click that green face group. Okay. And then with that done, I'm going to look and see if there's anything I need to eliminate. Uh, I would say I need to eliminate all of that stuff. Because what, what we'll end up doing is transforming this back edge and pulling it straight back and basically lengthening the back end of this to be something that you can cause to uh, extend all the way through that printed hybrid. Okay. This is looking okay, so we'll go with that. All right, now with that done and all of this back edge selected, push T for transform on your uh, keyboard and you wanna pull this straight back. All right, and that looks good. 
you can see if you need to go up or down, which I need to go slightly up with it. You want it to be perfectly flat. Right there. That to me looks like it's perfectly flat and we're gonna have a good access channel to get that in. With that done, um, you might end up generating some little folds in this. See how those are, are folded edges? So again, select all that. That's gonna create a whole new face group and you can especially see it down here on the bottom side. Um, those mesh folds could cause a problem for you. So with that done, what I'll do now is just push smooth and hopefully that gets rid of all those folds in the mesh and it appears that it has done that, okay? So now if I was to turn this on, you can see that now it's protruding all the way back through the uh, temporary and now it becomes a simple issue of doing a Boolean subtraction of this from this, all right? So here I'm gonna select first the hybrid and then control select this object and then Boolean difference. And remember, because this is 3.7 millimeters thick, this slot that it's gonna make is gonna also be 3.7 millimeters thick, all right? And that's going to give me the space now where I can easily slide in a trilor bar, which has been trimmed to the shape that we uh, have already exported um, in three and a half millimeter thickness, and it's gonna drop right in there. Now you can just take some cold cure acrylic, fill up the slot, push in your trilor, and then just let it set up. Once it's set up, you just trim away any excess here off this back edge, and then wrap it with a little bit more cold cure acrylic or uh, resin, whatever you prefer. So with that done, we have basically finished. I'll accept this. And now you have this hybrid restoration, which you will be able to 3D print in a Crown & Bridge colored resin, apply gums if you want to, but then take your Trilore material and you are going to print this object, the Trilore template, and that's the template. So all you have to do now with this is that you will print both of these objects. Get this back here where you can see both of them. I'm gonna print these on the same build plate. This is the template, this is the hybrid, um, same material so you're not wasting any time and when I get this done I will simply take this object and go ahead and lay it on top of a piece of that Trilore arch bar material of whatever your thickness is obviously in this case I'm gonna have to use three and a half and then just outline this with a pencil and then just pick up my lab handpiece or a bench grinder or whatever and just trim that Trilore arch bar to exactly this shape you don't have to worry so much about the uh, lingual edge back here if it's a little excessive back in that area because you'll be able to grind that off uh, once you've bonded this in but you need this front edge to be trimmed exactly to that shape and with that done you'll be able to simply slide this in to the back side of the restoration and uh, so this makes for a really easy way to do this it's pretty quick um, and it's super cheap I mean I don't know of any cheaper way that you can make an indestructible hybrid um, that you can rely on to really hold up in the mouth. Um, the longest one of these I've seen that I've been a part of is going on a year plus now in the mouth with not an issue one. So let me just show you in some slides what this looks like. This is a different case, but you'll get the same idea. You have your printed hybrid, you have your template on this side. Um, you would lay that on your arch bar. Now outline it. Here I did it with some powder, which I think a pencil is probably an easier way. But that gives me an outline, and now I just need to grind this back to that shape. So I used a bench grinder to uh, get the rough shape, and then I just need to cut in the slight holes. And this is the shape now of that material. And I didn't worry about the excess that's going to be sticking way back beyond the restoration. Now with this printed, I can slide this into the hybrid. Um, you could grind it down to shape, but as you notice, I've already bonded it at this point. So this had a little bit of slop, slop in the fit. Fill that up with cold cure acrylic or the material of your choice. Slide in your trilor, let it harden, and then with that done, you can now come back and trim back this excess. And I would suggest you wrap this so that that's not irritating to the tongue. Uh, in this example, I just simply used some uh, pink 3D printing resin. This is the same resin you would use for a denture base, 
but I just globbed it on with a paintbrush to encase this and then threw it in the curing unit and let it harden. Uh, it's really cheap, economical, and it gives it that pink tint. So you end up with a really nice looking uh, temporary hybrid restoration that I would venture to say is unbreakable. If you maintain a certain amount of thickness to this, don't let it get any thinner than three millimeters or so, I would almost bet you my life that you're not gonna be able to break this. I've got a few of these on demonstration at my courses that have had probably five or 600 people try to break it now uh, with everything they've got, and they've just not been able to because it's that strong. And so I hope you found this useful. Um, there's no reason in the world why you couldn't do this as a super affordable, uh, long-term final. Uh, it won't have the aesthetics of obviously zirconia milled hybrid or some of our other methods because printing is inherently monochromatic. But with that said, if, you're, if your patients are looking for an economical option and that's their focus more so than aesthetics, I see no reason why this wouldn't work. You know, if you use, uh, for example, Crown & Bridge MFH resin to print this in, that's a micro-filled hybrid composite. So the worst that can happen, uh, they're not gonna break this thing through and through. They might chip a tooth, and if they do, you can simply get out your bonding agent, repair it in the mouth, and it's just not a big deal. So I see very little downside to these, aside from the minimal amount of lab work involved, and it's truly not much, but then also the aesthetics are just not gonna be up to par with what we can achieve with a lab-made restoration. But again, it's nice to have options across the entire spectrum. So I hope you found this uh, video useful.